Hi, internet. It's probably about 8 o'clock when I'm posting this. I'm recording a little bit early because i got to be somewhere else tonight at 8 o'clock to actually uh, do some other activities. But I didn't want to miss a night of recording TikTok of Oz, the eighth book in the Oz series, and we're ready for Chapter 8 tonight. Uh, last night we finally got to meet TikTok, uh, which was nice because, you know, she, he hadn't actually been in the book named after him yet until last night. <clears throat> So tonight's chapter, once again, uh, sticking with the theme of the alliteration of that, that opening consonant, tonight's chapter is called Tick Tock Tackles a Tough Task. Lots of T's. Let's find out what this chapter is all about. While Shaggy and his companions stood huddled in a group at one side, the army of Oogaboo was approaching along the pathway. The tramp of their feet being now and then accompanied by a dismal groan as one of the officers stepped on a sharp stone or knocked his funny bone against his neighbor's sword handle. Then, out from among the trees marched private files bearing the banner of Oogaboo, which fluttered from a long pole. This pole he stuck in the ground just in front of the well, and then he cried in a loud voice, (coughs) I hereby conquer this territory in the name of Queen and so forth of Oogaboo, and all the inhabitants of the land, I proclaim her slaves. Some of the officers now stuck their heads out of the bushes and asked, Is the coast clear, Private Files? There is no coast here, was the reply, but all's well. I hope there's water in it, said General Cone, mustering courage to advance to the well, but just then he caught a glimpse of Tick-Tock and Shaggy and at once fell upon his knees, trembling and frightened, and cried out, Mercy, kind enemies, mercy, spare us, and we will be your slaves forever. The other officers, who had now advanced into the clearing, likewise fell upon their knees and begged for mercy. Files turned around and, seeing the strangers for the first time, examined them with much curiosity. Then, discovering that three of the party were girls, he lifted his cap and made a polite bow. "'What's all this?' "'Oh, I'm sorry. "'What's all this?' demanded a harsh voice as Queen Anne reached the place and beheld her kneeling army. Uh, "'Permit us to introduce ourselves,' replied Shaggy, stepping forward. "'This is Tick-Tock, the clockwork man, who works better than some meat people. "'Here's Princess Ozga of Roseland, just now unfortunately exiled from her kingdom of roses. "'Next I present Polychrome, a sky fairy who lost her bow by accident and can't find her way home. The small girl here is Betsy Bobbin, from some unknown earthly paradise called Oklahoma. And with her you see Mr. Hank, a mule with a long tail and a short temper. Pa! said Anne scornfully. A lot of vagabonds you are, all lost or strayed. I suppose not worth a queen's plundering. I'm sorry I've conquered you. But you haven't conquered us yet, called Betsy indignantly. No, agreed Files, that is a fact. But if my officers will kindly command me to conquer you, I will do so at once, after which we can stop arguing and converse more at our ease. The officers had by this time risen from their knees and brushed the dust from their trousers. To them, the enemy did not look very fierce, so the generals and colonels and majors and captains gained courage to face them, began strutting in their most haughty manner. You must understand, said Anne, that I am the Queen of Oogaboo, and this is my invincible army. We are busy conquering the world, and since you seem to be part of the world, and are obstructing our journey, it is necessary for us to conquer you, unworthy though you may be of such high honor. That's quite all right, replied Shaggy. Conquer us as often as you like. We don't mind. But we won't be anybody's slaves, replied Betsy positively. We'll see about that, retorted the queen angrily. Advance, Private Files, and bind the enemy hand and foot. But Private Files looked at pretty Betsy and fascinating Polychrome and the beautiful Rose Princess and shook his head. T'would be impolite and I won't do it, he asserted. You must, cried Anne, it's your duty to obey orders. I haven't received any orders from my officers, objected the private. But the generals now shouted, Forward and bind the prisoners! and the colonels and majors and captains repeated the command, yelling it as loud as they could. All this noise annoyed Hank, who'd been eyeing the army of Oogaboo with strong disfavor. The mule now dashed forward and began backing upon the officers and kicking fierce and dangerous heels at them. 
The attack was so sudden that the officers scattered like dust in a whirlwind, dropping their swords as they ran and trying to seek refuge behind the trees and bushes. Betsy laughed joyously at the comical rout of the noble army, and Polychrome danced with glee. But Anne was furious at this ignoble defeat of her gallant forces by one small mule. "'Private Files, I command you to do your duty!' she cried again, and then she herself ducked to escape the mule's heels, for Hank made no distinction in favor of a lady who was an open enemy. Betsy grabbed her champion by the forelock, however, and so held him fast. When the officers saw that the mule was restrained from further attacks, they crept fearfully back and picked up their discarded swords. "'Private Files, seize and bind these prisoners!' screamed the queen. "'No!' said Files, throwing down his gun and removing the knapsack which was strapped to his back. I resign my position as the army of Ugubu. I enlisted to fight the enemy and become a hero, but if you want someone to bind harmless girls, you'll have to hire another private. Then he walked over to the others and shook hands with Shaggy and TikTok. Treason! shrieked Anne, and all the other officers echoed her cry. Nonsense, said Files. I have the right to resign if I want to. "'Indeed you haven't!' retorted the queen. "'If you resign, it will break up my army, and I cannot conquer the world!' She now turned to the officers and said, "'I must ask you to do me a favor. I know it is undignified in officers to fight, but unless you immediately capture private files and force them to obey my orders, there will be no plunder for any of us. Also, it is likely you will all suffer the pangs of hunger, and when we meet a powerful foe, you're liable to be captured and made slaves!' The prospect of this awful fate so frightened the officers that they drew their swords and rushed upon Files, who stood beside Shaggy in a truly ferocious manner. The next instant, however, they halted and again fell upon their knees, for there before them was the glistening love magnet, held in the hand of the smiling Shaggy Man, and the sight of this magic talisman at once won the heart of every Ugubuite. Even Anne saw the love magnet, and, forgetting all enmity and anger, threw herself upon Shaggy and embraced him lovingly. Quite disconcerted by this unexpected effect of the magnet, Shaggy disengaged himself from the queen's encircling arms and quickly hid the talisman in his pocket. The adventurers from Ugubu were now his firm friends and there was no more talk about conquering and binding any of his party. "'If you insist on conquering anyone,' said Shaggy, "'you may march with me to the underground kingdom of Regido.' To conquer the world, you'll have, as you have set out to do, you must conquer everyone under its surface as well as those upon its surface. No one in the world needs conquering so much as Regido. Well, who is he? asked Anne. The Metal Monarch, King of the Gnomes. Uh, is he rich? inquired Major Stockings in a serious, anxious voice. Of course, answered Shaggy. He owns all the metal that lies underground, copper, gold, silver, brass, and tin. He has an idea he also owns all the metals above ground, for he says all metal was once part of his kingdom. So by conquering the metal monarch, you'll win all the riches in the world. Ah, exclaimed General Apple, heaving a deep sigh. That would be plunder worth our while. Let's conquer him, your majesty. The queen looked reproachfully at Files, who was sitting next to the lovely princess, and whispering in her ear. Alas, said Anne, I no longer have an army. I have plenty of brave officers. Indeed, but no private soldier for them to command. Therefore, I cannot conquer Regido and win all his wealth. Why don't you make one of your officers the private? asked Shaggy. But at once, every officer began to protest, and the Queen of Ugubu shook her head as she replied, That is impossible. A private soldier must be a terrible fighter, and my officers are unable to fight. They are exceptionally brave in commanding others to fight, but they could not themselves meet the enemy and conquer. "'Very true, Your Majesty,' said Colonel Plum eagerly. "'There are many kinds of bravery, and one cannot be expected to possess them all. "'I myself am brave as a lion in all ways until it comes to fighting, and then my nature revolts. "'Fighting is unkind and liable to be injurious to others. "'So, being a gentleman, I never fight.' "'Nor I,' shouted each of the other officers. "'You see,' said Anne, "'how helpless I am. "'Had not Private Files proved himself a traitor and a deserter, "'I would gladly have conquered this Ruggedo. "'But an army without a private soldier "'is much like a bee without a stinger.' "'I am not a traitor, Your Majesty,' protested Files. 
I've resigned in a proper manner, not liking the job, but there are plenty of people to take my place. Why not make Shaggy Man the private soldier? He might be killed, said Anne, looking tenderly at Shaggy, for he is immortal and able to die. If anything happened to him, it would break my heart. It would hurt me worse than that, declared Shaggy. <laughs> you must admit, your majesty, that I am commander of this expedition, for it is my brother we are seeking rather than plunder. But I and my companions would like the assistance of your army, and if you could help us to conquer Regido and to rescue my brother from captivity, we will allow you to keep all the gold and jewels and any other plunder you may find. This prospect was so tempting, the officers began whispering together, and presently Colonel Cheese said, Your Majesty, by combining our brains, we have evolved a most brilliant idea. We will make the clockwork man the private soldier. Who? Me? asked Tick-Tock. Not for a single second. I cannot fight, and you must not forget that it was Ruggedo who threw me in the well. But at that time you had no gun, said Polychrome. But if you join the army of Ubu, you will carry the gun that Mr. Files used. <laughs> a soldier must be able to run as well as to fight, protested Tick-Tock. And if my works run down, as they often do... I could neither run nor fight. Well, I'll keep you wound up, Tick-Tock, promised Betsy. Why, it isn't a bad idea, said Shaggy. Tick-Tock will make an ideal soldier for nothing can injure him except a sledgehammer. Since a private soldier seems to be necessary to this army, Tick-Tock is the only one of our party fitted to undertake the job. What must I do? asked Tick-Tock. Obey orders, replied Anne. When the officers command you to do anything, you must do it. That is all. And that's enough, too, said Files. Do I get a salary, inquired Tick-Tock. You'll get your share of the plunder, answered the queen. Yes, remarked Files. One half of the plunder goes to Queen Anne. The other half is divided among the officers. And the private gets the rest. That will be satisfactory, said Tick-Tock, picking up the gun and examining it wonderingly, for he had never before seen such a weapon. Then Anne strapped the knapsack, knapsack, knapsack? Then Anne strapped the knapsack to Tick-Tock's copper back and said, Now we are ready to march to Regito's kingdom and conquer it. Officers, give the command to march. Fall in, yelled the generals, drawing their swords. Fall in, cried the colonels, drawing their swords. Fall in, shouted the majors, drawing their swords. Fall in, bawled the captains, drawing their swords. Tick-Tock looked at them and then around him in surprise. Fall in what? The well? he asked. <laughs> no, said Queen Anne. The kids found that very amusing. No, said Queen Anne, you must fall in marching order. I, <coughs> can I not march without falling into it? asked the clockwork man. Uh, shoulder your gun and prepare to march, advised Files. So Tick-Tock took the gun straight, uh, held the gun straight and stood still. What next? he asked. The queen turned to Shaggy. Which road leads to the Middle Monarch's cavern? We don't know, your majesty, was the reply. But this is absurd, said Anne with a frown. If we can't get to Regido, it is certain we can't conquer him. Well, you're right, admitted Shaggy. But I did not say we could not get to him. We'd only have to discover the way, and that was the matter we were considering when you and your magnificent army arrived here. Well, get busy and discover it, snapped the queen. That was no easy task. They all stood looking from one road to another in perplexity. The paths radiated from the little clearing like the rays of the midday sun, and each path seemed like all the others. Files and the Rose Princess, who had by this time become good friends, advanced a little way along one of the roads and found it was hoard bordered by pretty wildflowers. Why don't you ask the flowers to tell you the way? he asked to his companion. The flowers? returned the princess, surprised at the question. Of course, said Files. Field flowers must be second cousins to a Rose Princess, and I believe if you ask them, they will tell you. She looked more closely at the flowers. There were hundreds of them, white daisies, golden buttercups, bluebells, and daffodils growing by the roadside, and each flower head was firmly set upon its slender but stout stem. 
There were even a few wild roses scattered here and there, and perhaps it was the sight of these that gave the princess courage to ask the important question. She dropped to her knees, facing the flowers, and extended both her arms pleadingly toward them. "'Tell me, pretty cousins,' she said in her sweet, gentle voice, "'which way will lead us to the kingdom of Regido, the Gnome King?' At once all the stems bent gracefully to the right, and the flower heads nodded once, twice, thrice in that direction. "'Well, that's it!' cried Files joyfully. "'Now we know the way!' Ozga rose to her feet and looked wonderingly at the field flowers, which had now resumed their upright position. "'Was it the wind, do you think?' she asked in a low whisper. "'No, indeed,' replied Files. "'There is not a breath of wind stirring. "'All these lovely blossoms of yours are indeed your cousins, "'and answered your question at once, as I knew they would.'" And that is the end of Chapter 8, Tick-Tock Tackles a Tough Task. Is that what it was called? Yeah, Tick-Tock Tackles a Tough Task. Uh, that is the end of Chapter 8. Tomorrow night, right here at 8 o'clock Facebook Live, We'll prepare for Thanksgiving with one more chapter before the big day. And that'll be chapter nine. Regido's Rage is rash and reckless. Lots of R's tomorrow night. Um, I did want to address something from last night's chapter that very much confused me. Um, if you all will recall, book one, two, three, four, five is called The Road to Oz. In The Road to Oz... Dorothy comes upon the shaggy man standing at a crossroads and they argue for a while about where they need to go and then they take off down a road and first they meet Button Bright and next up they meet Polychrome, the rainbow's daughter. Are we going to meet Button Bright? I don't think we're going to meet Button Bright. Uh -huh. But my problem is shaggy man is there and they meet Polychrome, the rainbow's daughter. But last night, shaggy man runs into Polychrome, the rainbow's daughter and they seemed to not know one another. Yeah. Like, okay. they, he was like, who are you? And she's like, I don't like you, if you recall. So I was very confused by the entire thing. I so I looked it up on the internet, trying to figure out, like, was I wrong? Do I Am I misremembering the road to Oz? I was pretty sure they were both there together. Because it was, yeah, it was Polychrome, Button Bright, Shaggy, and Dorothy. And they were all traveling together. And I, I was positive, right? So I looked at it online, and I'm absolutely correct. And no one is quite sure why when they meet up in this book, they don't seem to know one another. So, if you were confused like the, about that like I was, I'm sorry to tell you I don't have a good answer other than maybe L. Frank Baum forgot that they'd met before in a previous book. I, I have no idea. Yeah, I mean, there were years between the writings of these books. Um, let's see, TikTok of Oz... That's a good point. Ileana said that it, it had been a while between books. Um, TikTok of Oz was written in 1914. Um, and The Road to Oz was written... Let's see if I... i got to get it out from under some of the other books. Hold on a second. The Road to Oz was originally written in... 1909. So there was literally five years between the books. And maybe in five years, L. Frank Baum forgot that they'd met. Um, we've only, we're only a couple months removed from reading The Road to Oz, so it's, it's still fresh in our minds. Oh, there was a five year difference. Yes, you said, you, you guessed five years, didn't you, Ailes? Good job. You were absolutely correct. Um, so, unless it's that, I really have no clue. Just Baum forgot he had these characters meet previously. Um, but I found it very interesting and very confusing last night. I was actually quite annoyed. And as I was reading, I kept waiting for them to be like, oh yeah, it's you. I remember you. And neither of them ever did. And I was like, what the heck? So now, if you were confused like I was, you're not crazy. You're right. They had met before. Baum forgot, maybe. Uh, otherwise, I don't know why they didn't recognize one another last night. Or maybe I just tried holding my laugh for whatever Polly Crumb couldn't say. He just made it so the characters forgot they met. Arthur says it's possible they forgot they'd met. I would think, given the description of Polly Crumb as like the most beautiful female on the planet... Or the most beautiful female in the universe. I figure Shaggy Man shouldn't forget her. Shouldn't. Not to mention, he got the love magnet again. Which would be a pretty distinguishing feature. Like, Polychrome should remember, I met a guy with a magnet like that once. Shaggy Man should be like, I remember the most beautiful creature on the in the universe. I, I remember the Rainbow's kid. I, I, yeah, and she's the Rainbow's daughter. That seems like the sort of person you'd remember. 
I so, remember if somebody was a mini rainbow. I would remember a tiny rainbow in a white dress. Yes. <laughs> so, I don't have an explanation. <laughs> None of us do. But I do hope you'll join us tomorrow night for the chapter with all the R's about Rigido. And uh, we'll see you then. Good night, everyone.